Hello, my fellow music lovers. I'm Allison Hagendorf, and welcome to the show. This is where we celebrate the universal love of music and the rock and roll spirit that lives in each of us. My guest today is the extremely talented songwriter, rising pop star, and viral TikTok sensation, Jax. We talk all about her latest chart-topping track, Cinderella Snapped, the follow-up to her song, Victoria's Secret, finally achieving success after years of working on her craft, surviving her battle with cancer, using her platform to give back, and how we bonded over our love of dad jokes and more. And please stay tuned after the interview for my sound advice, new music you need to know. It all starts now. I have to tell you, I love your style. Thank you. I almost want to start there because I love your whole thing. (laughs) This is every single thing I'm wearing right now is something I stole from somebody else. (laughs) That's great. (laughs) This is my fiance's jacket. It's recycled. This is all recycled. It's recycled. Yeah. And what about the hairstyle? It's just like the easiest upkeep of hair for me (laughs) just because I my hair is so dead. (laughs) <laughs> it's like just I've over bleached the crap out of it. So I, I put it in a bun and that works. These aren't even really bangs. It's just just like breakage. I never <laughs> the last time I cut bangs was like so many years ago and they just they just breakage. didn't grow back. This is not from a haircut. This I is think from it looks awesome. And what about burns? <laughs> and what about the layered necklaces? I like that. Oh, yeah. I, I just like that. Yeah, know. those are cool necklaces. But I am allergic to metal. Oh, really? So, but so I just Is that talk- where you wear a turtleneck? Uh, or mo- is it a mock turtle? You know, the turtlenecks came from like a former insecurity of mine that turned into part of my fashion. I just like layering things with turtlenecks now. It's no longer an insecurity, but I had like gnarly scars here for a long time from a right, surgery. And right. I at first I was like, oh, easy. I just cover it up with a turtleneck. And I started wearing them. I'm like, oh, I could layer. Turtle it looks necks. awesome. Came from a toxic place, but it ended up in a cool place. And it's also very nineties. Because uh, in nineties we would wear t shirts over long sleeves. True. So I even it... cut I cut like the like right now I'm in a freaking Oh, I love it. I, <laughs> this is a, I, my last photo shoot. The stylist was nice enough to let me keep this. That's photo. really it says, cool. Dad. <laughs> number one dad on it. Okay. Like, he, so he he's the number zero dad, actually. Okay, but. Zero dad. <laughs> so I first of all, I want to talk about your music, which you have referred to as dad pop, which yeah. I appreciate because I I'm like the king of dad jokes. You think? I am. I really am. I thought I was the king. No, I'm like <laughs> love puns, like the whole thing. I love okay. It. I live for it. So when I heard you reference your music as dad pop, I'm like, she's my kind of girl. Yeah, dude. Da- kind of dad girl. pop is like for me, it means just like not being afraid to write dad joke lyrics, which is like something I've shied away from my whole life because I was told it was too dad like. <laughs> and then I was like, you know what? There's no such thing. I don't think there is such thing as too dad like. <laughs> you have to embrace it. All it means is they're very witty. Sure, I'll take okay. it. I it think a definitely witty. a big uh, like cheese ball with with lyrics, especially only especially for my project because I think like that's the stuff I like personally, I do too. and that's how I like to talk in conversation with people and. Yeah, for my project, like for I've written, I've, I was a songwriter for so many years, right. not for myself. So I've gone like the very introspective route if the artist wanted that or if the artist wanted like, you know, something a little simpler where it's just like repetitive kind of EDM style. But then when I started writing back my own stuff, I was like, I am not going to hold back. I'm just going to make this as cheesy as I, I want it to be. And, and it has resonated. <laughs> oh, well. It has resonated. I mean. You are a success story of how TikTok can be a positive platform. Mm. And I, for me, I, it's so important that fans understand that you have been doing this your whole life. Oh, you are wow. not, by any stretch of the imagination, a, an overnight sensation, <laughs> you know, something that just went viral. Like, I know your whole history, and I, I want to talk about it, but yeah. you are such a talent. You've been working at this your whole life. Thank and TikTok you. was simply a catalyst Thank you. for I, you. Yeah, I think. And the, but there is, like, in my mind, like, a little bit of a rebirth. Like, of course, no, like, nothing is overnight. Right, But, of like... This is the first time in my life where I've had success in something where I'm like authentically doing what I want, which kind of, I guess, goes to show you maybe I could have had success prior if I was being more authentic. Um, But I've been, yeah, I've been performing live, writing songs, working in music since I was like 11, you know, and I, um, it's so hard to get people to hear your, the internet is so loud, you know, it's like the biggest like matrix of a world right now. So feeling the competition to get your 
someone to hear something and at least like listen to your song is just impossible. So TikTok definitely gave me finally like a stage to do it in my own way. So I'm really, I'm really, really grateful. It's been like almost, it feels like a miracle. Actually, I feel like if people in music, you know, or any creative space, you know, as a freelancer, you know how hard it can be um, to get to break through something, you know? Yeah. And for me, I, I feel almost like guilt because I've never experienced it before to this degree. So right. I mean, it's like, how, 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 how? I, 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 for the first time in my life, I'm actually getting like rewarded for work. And yes. this, that's a weird feeling when you have a lot of trauma in work. <laughs> right. No, for yeah. sure. You've been, well, you've been at it for so long. Yeah. Was there a turning point? Like, what was that moment that you realized, oh, okay, it's game on? Um, there was an excitement for sure when, because it's for uh, my first like viral video on TikTok was a parody of Stacy's mom from right. Stacy's mom's perspective. So then when that. Which was so clever. <laughs> so what gave you that idea? Uh, I, we were just in the apartment and I was like, we were watching a movie and I was like, babe. It'd be so funny if we did a video from like Stacy's mom, but like as Stacy's mom, yeah, who would be like my mom, like the it's genius Long Island Jewish mother, right? Yeah. And and um, at first, I even when I sat down and did it, I didn't know the app, and I see a lot of different things in my feed, and I and I start, I was really taking myself super seriously, even the first few takes. I wish I saved them, but they were like, Stacy, why is your boy like just the ugh, right? And I eventually got bored with myself, and I. We'd still talk about how I was like, I'm so fucking boring. I just like yelled it out loud and he was like laughing at me. So I put on a robe and a towel like, oh as if God. I just got yeah. in the shower and did it stupid. And then for a day, it didn't get any views at all. It was just like less than a thousand views. And then I was like, okay, great. Once again, I have now embarrassed myself on the internet. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> Whatever. And then uh, it, in the middle of the night, it woke me up to like 10 million views on the video and followers. And then and then all the things I posted prior, people started watching. So the turning point was, okay, first the wheels started turning about, oh, it, it, if this is what people want, I, I'm not an influencer. I'm certainly not a comedian, but I am a songwriter, so I can definitely find points of views in other songs. Yes. You know, and that, I could keep making that. But then again, I'm not, this is not what I want to do. This is a lot. And um, the moment I realized it was like serious for my work was when I posted my first original after that. And yes. that also got so much love. I was like, oh my God, they really care about this too. This is all I ever asked for was That's that it. people saw what I was working on. So it's it was cool. This that is cool. so validating and so yeah. many things. Tell me about going from doing like funny, playful, you know, jingles and songs to doing your original music. It, it's hard. It's hard to bridge the gap and um, try to be you instead of like writing based on what you think other people want to see. Right. I try to find a happy medium when I'm writing original music because the like truth be told, the parodies and the the style of writing in the goofy content is not so far off of how like m how I want to write. Yeah, it's fun and I have a good time doing it. So I'm like, if I wish there was a way that in pop music and in my project I can kind of blend the worlds and almost like satirically write. You yes. know, and I and it's cheesy sometimes. And sometimes it's dark. You know, I don't know whatever I'm going through, but it's always. It's always very tongue in cheek. So when I get in the studio, I'm thinking, okay, I want my audience on TikTok to hear this song and I want them to feel as much as they feel when they listen to my stupid videos, you know? Yeah. Um, it's a it's a tricky balance, but we're still working on it. Yeah. I'm still every day, every day. When you posted Ring Pop and it had such success, that must have been the most legitimizing moment. It's the first time in my life that I like saw the number million yeah. on a, an original song. Like, right. That's, that's just unbelievable. Crazy. Yeah. It was crazy. Really crazy. Right. Because just like in your videos, like that's fun. That's flattering. They like the content that yeah, you're putting yeah. out. This right. is actually putting out your music. Yeah. That's so where it was like, okay, God, oh God, oh God, post. Yeah. <laughs> like, uh, yeah. like My Father is so beautiful. I mean, Thank The you. Knot actually called it one of the best father-daughter songs of all time. Like something crazy oh, right, like that. Oh, Oh my God, I remember yes, seeing that. Yes, that article. song is so beautiful. Thank you. And Victoria's Secret, of course, has become the most popular song. 
But I think the story behind it, and I want to kind of get into that, that you use your music as a way to inspire and empower young people, everyone, not just young people, everyone. Thank but you. it was the girl that you babysit, Chelsea. <laughs> Chelsea. So the story was that she had gone to Victoria's Secret and came back and, you know, her friends were. Yeah, she and she gets that on a, a daily basis. I, I, it's like middle school so triggering oh. you know you're like i think back to the times in middle school where everything felt like it was the end of the world yes um and she's constantly telling me about like the boy drama and things she's insecure about and it that was just like kind of one of many stories where i i had that concept for a while and i could never fully execute the song because every time i tried to write it like for the dad joke sake i yes. was like oh it's so fun to be able to play on what a secret is like when you have a concept a store or a brand name like Victoria's Secret that kind of was a source of a lot of trauma for me yeah. not just them but all the brands right but that one specifically Victoria's Secret I was like well what's the secret that there's this like big corporation behind it manipulating us into feeling a certain way about ourselves and I wanted to write that but every time I tried it was like so sad it yeah. was so serious and like I could never get through even halfway through a chorus or something it was like we att attempted it a million times and then that stuck out to me because the way I speak to Chelsea and kids her age in my life is not so serious it's right. they don't really take that seriously it's like that's like when your mom is like don't worry you're beautiful you're like shut up right <laughs> right you should know your audience yeah well yeah. Kids are sarcastic and they're ruthless and they're savage. And that's yeah. like the kind of energy when I'm talking to Chelsea and I want to actually break through to her. Yeah. That's the that's the tone I have with her. And that's what works, you know? Yeah. And that was the tone I wanted to that just like a light bulb went off. I was like, oh, wait, that's the tone I should be approaching it with because the sad ballad about like the pain that, yeah. it, that it's just like. No, they don't want to hear it, and I don't want to hear it. You know, mm -hmm. it's funnier to take it back, and and make light of it, and make a joke out of the joke that is that kind of corporation. So, yeah. um, and do it sarcastically and cheesy, and just like paint this image of some like creepy old man designing a body. Like that was what made it fun to record it. And then just the early two thousands kind of pop punk element of the song is just where I have so much fun in the studio. Ugh, um, I love that. Just a classic old four chord. So fun. Angst and <laughs> cheesiness. Um, but yeah, it was a very, very cool year. And you, I, I also life. love your version with Harper. Harper. I mean, how, tell me how that came about. <laughs> and I love that, again, giving another platform to, you know, like a young girl. Yeah, I mean, I mean she's she, awesome. That kid is such a powerhouse. I um, I saw her in my free page. Like her. Oh, really? Um, okay. Her uh, America's Got Talent. Yes. That was her uh, audition. Yes, her metal screams. Cracked me up. Just because, A, she's obviously very talented, and it's so cool to see a little kid just owning the stage like that and yeah. being able to scream properly. Like, she does it properly. She really does. Um, without hurting herself. But I was like, this is such a, like, hilarious plot twist on, like, a reality TV show yes. where she's supposed to be this, like, little girl who's singing some song, and she just walks on stage in her little flower dress, and it's like, wow. And I was like, so someone good. has to reach out to this girl's manager or something. I would love to have her over for a TikTok. That's amazing. And then it, Victoria's Secret happened. So it just so happened. That the, and I was like, why don't we do Harper's version where she can scream on this song? So he took her to the studio. She did it in like two takes. Oh, my God. It took God. like literally 30 minutes. And then we went back and just rocked out to it. So, so fun. She's crazy. I love it. I love it. Yeah. The whole rock and metal community like love her. Oh, my God. They do. Yeah. Oh, they yeah. Really do. And it's badass. I didn't they know. support her. I didn't sure. know there was that world on the Internet. There's a world for everything. Yeah. Oh, there's a whole world. Yeah. Uh, we support Harper. Yeah. She's awesome. What was so crazy, and I'm sure you were not expecting this, is that Victoria's Secret actually responded. The company. Yeah. That and was it made crazy. a statement in response to your song. Yeah. Then you realize your music's <laughs> actually next level now that it's like, so how did that make you feel? I think sometimes with brands and when there's some sort of like PR crisis on the corporate side of these things, like there's a level of damage control that mm -hmm. marketing people need to do. Um, and my intention when I wrote Victoria's Secret was not to take down the company by mm -hmm. any means. It was a metaphor for a much bigger issue and things that I felt growing up. Um, so it's just as a songwriter, I kind of just write the thing, yeah. write my experience, use a couple of puns like Victoria's Secret and yeah. then hope people, fingers crossed, like I hope people get it or connect to it in some way. Um, but 
I think it would have been really inauthentic of me if I were to join the conversation or be part of the movement for a brand that wasn't my goal. Right. Um, and I also can't speak on behalf of like generations and generations of people that have gone through what I've gone through to even more extreme degrees. Like yeah. I've met, I've seen so many people talk about how underrepresented they are in advertising and it's way worse than I have had it. Right. So I was like, you know, the way I can be part of this conversation, if you guys really want me to be part of this, we've changed movement is I have a lot of fans on TikTok that have, were watching and telling me their stories. So why don't you let them take the floor and they'll comment what they need from you guys because I don't really care at this point. I'm ordering like my bras like from like <laughs> crappy websites. I don't even know. Like I'm like, it's just, I have that one ugly bra. You know what I'm talking about? Who doesn't? The like uh, the beige yeah. dirty one. I just go with black. <laughs> See, that's why I just stick with black. Yeah. You know, I mean, you got to keep it simple. I have They're mostly more durable. black bras, but I don't even, I don't even, I don't remember the last time I wore a padded bra. Right. It's like. I have one that's like, Hello, I'm still here. <laughs> I actually, I stick to sports bras. I'm yeah, just like, you too. know, you got to be on the go. You got to be I'm comfortable. Wearing. Yeah. You know? Like, I also on. like, I used to really want big boobs. And like, I'm like a, I think I'm probably around like a C plus D energy, which is like, they used to chant Jax's flat chest in my summer camp. Oh and my And it was like, humiliating. I thought it was just the end of the world, right? And what it was, is wrong I was crying, writing home, be like, mom, dad, come pick me up. They like keep talking about my boobs That's are so flat. so mean. But then I got them. And I'm like, they give me freaking back problems. Yeah. So I'm like. <laughs> yeah. It's <laughs> so true. I stick to the things that are like just going to hold Sports my. Sports bras. They're and the It's best. the move. It's the move. And this this podcast is sponsored by <laughs> your shittiest sports bra. <laughs> well, you got to be comfortable. You know what I'm saying? It's I like, do know come what on. you're saying. I, I, my day is not great if I'm uncomfortable. So right. I stick to the sports bra. Still yeah. have some back pain. but uh, Yeah. Yeah. Sports bras. I keep saying I'm going to get a breast reduction. Just to like take some of the upper back pain off, and my fiance is like, no, <laughs> boobies. <laughs> I want to talk about Cinderella Snapped. Congratulations, Thank your you. most recent song. Thank um, you. The response has been amazing on streaming. I think it was like number one pop radio, like in crazy, like crazy accolades happening. Yeah, uh, it is. It's been very bizarre for me to experience like an outpour of love from the radio side of things just from people being kind to me Aww. it's like it's not like I did anything to deserve like that extreme level of love so I'm like every day I wake up I'm like how and what Aww. can I do like who's where are they at can I send someone a candle like I don't Aww. even like because uh, it's just it you know to be on the radio even once is like a miracle for any songwriter. And like to have the number one most added song within the first week of release was just, it's, I feel like I'm in a Black Mirror episode sometimes. <laughs> like I have. This song though is really special and I love the video that you shared with your Nana. Yeah. So wait, tell me more about the story about the book. First of all, I love that she's holding a martini during she this is story. A I mean, trip. she's badass. She's a trip. Um, I feel like it was like in the afternoon and here she is enjoying her martini. I don't think people it. really understand, unless you're from the East Coast, can yes. like fully comprehend New Yorker. like a, New Yorker. A, the elderly of the East Coast. Yeah. Are totally different energy than most grandparents right badass um yeah. she is badass she is so badass she actually her story is wild she um raised children and and had a whole family and then went back to school and then for her time like that oh, was pretty a pretty crazy thing really especially is. for like a woman of a household to do of like, course yeah like she raised her family got them out of the house got them to school got everybody their education held down the fort went back to school and then was offered like a position on at a firm on Wall Street that was for foreign um it was just like foreign finances and stuff like that and it was like some crazy what? complicated Unheard of. very powerful position on Wall Street she was just always a badass she was essentially what just a trailblazer. the CEO of like that I've got to witness growing up so i think and she zero fucks no filter to a scary degree required a lot of editing in my video <laughs> so like, like that, right Whatever it is, uh, so goal, great. actual goals. Like uh, that's exactly yes. what I want to be when I grow up. And um, yeah, there was like the I had gone through like a middle school drama where I was like, oh my date, 
went danced my best friend at the day and I was left with no prints at this like and it was a huge inspiration behind the song because we had found that old book she had she, she took my OG Cinderella book and just like as a joke took a red marker and crossed out all the things she disagreed cool with like graded that? it yeah and I went yeah and we found that thing and I was like oh my god I have an idea we should write a song where we like revamp it's That's not like genius. I'd be the first person to you know address that the f- old format of a fairy tale is just so outdated right with, right we're with, with mostly princesses waiting of course for a prince to choose yeah. them to to wed you know yes, <laughs> instead yes. of all the things that it would be a, an amazing success story for a princess to like you know own the whole land you know and like, yeah and finally that's things. changing that's changing the changing, last like yeah. handful of movies totally it's like okay thank frozen, god frozen was yeah, frozen frozen i i mean i was down like the the Reddit conspiracy, like, theory things about Frozen when I saw it because it was such a brilliant film. And I was like, oh, my God, this is about mental health, I think. Mm-hmm. Like, I think people's conspiracy was right. Well, I was so nervous while watching Frozen the entire time. So I was like, wait a second. <laughs> the true love can't be the guy. I was yeah. like, please don't let it be the guy because that's just so generic. And at the end, it was like the sisterly love yes, and that was. whole thing. And I was like, okay, good. And it was a Thank self-love. God. And it was a like, self-love. Yeah. And it was a whole thing. I was like, okay. Yeah. I think it was a, a commentary on some mental health things. Just For feeling sure. Like, feeling like you everything you touch freezes, you know, yeah. and like having this like that. I feel that all the time. Like that you want to stay away from everybody. You want to seclude your life and stay away from everybody because you feel like you're a burden. Yeah. And it like makes you lonely. And then um, you start to fester in it and it turns into a nightmare. And mm-hmm. then when you realize that it's – you're not a problem in other people's lives and you're not a nuisance. I love I, lo- I loved Frozen. I mean, of course, you talk about the dark side of TikTok yeah. as well. I mean, oh, yeah, there's there are good things about it. Of course, you're a perfect example of it. It, it provided a platform for you. But I mean, you, you even shared on your own that, you know, you're, you're funny and positive on camera. But then sometimes when you look at the comments or, you know, they get to you, they do oh bother you. I'm such a big baby. Like, they bother me so on a personal level just because it's interesting. I always picture it like if somebody who just comments being like, you're a terrible singer, right? Or you're, you are you suck and this is cringe, right? You as a person are just garbage, right? It's like the things that you kill yourself. You know, you see everything from general just insults and, you know, to people having an issue with what you're doing, all of it, right? But nobody, if you were just grocery shopping, right, nobody would ever – It'd be so weird yeah. if someone came up to you and were just like, I think you're ugly. And it's you see, like, that's you the know. thing, though, that upsets <laughs> me about TikTok is like, where, what's happening? Like, why, why is it creating this world of toxicity? Yeah, of all of the eras of social media and apps, like, on the, uh, on the bright side of it, it's a very conversational, honest app like catered to each individual brain. I don't know where that's going to land us in the future. Yeah. But um, I will say like it's less the, – the the comments can be ruthless, but it's a lot of times it's just like you won't really get people in your comments that weren't meant to be at that video, you know? Yeah. So a lot of it's constructive. A lot of times like somebody will suggest something and I'm like, oh, that's a great suggestion. Um, and Gen Z is so – so brutally honest. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't even know if it's like I think there's a there's a world of trolls on the internet, but I think Gen Z is just like immune to being sold things. Right, so they're just pretty ruthless and honest and to the point, which I actually love. Yeah, so, um, uh, well, candor I appreciate. Yeah, me you know, too. honesty, candor, and being genuine and authentic. Yes, right. But being just ruthless and mean that's not constructive at all. No, that no. I'm not down with. Yeah, it's it's not good on your mental health. I think like. I, it would be if, if I was out on a – if anybody, like if you could picture yourself just being at a restaurant and someone comes up to you and goes like, hey, um, I think you're uh, – you have a double chin, right? Most people could dwell on that moment anywhere from a week later to yeah. years later. Forever. To forever looking, yeah. you know. And I get like thousands of those things a day. So if you so don't, bizarre. if you don't like learn how to filter out what's important and to your life and and to your work and to the people you love, uh, like it's it could put you in a really really bad place. Like I, I wish I could have like a little Cardi B Doja Cat energy where it's just like, ha ha, 
like, <laughs> fuck the haters. Like, I don't know. Like, I... I don't know. Yeah. I need you need people to not like your work. Otherwise, you're probably doing something wrong as an artist. So it's not really that much about that as it is like. But that's my thing. I feel like there are people. It's not, I don't. I think you objectively have a great voice and you objectively oh, you. have great witty lyrics. So that's what I'm saying. For some people, it's almost more of a reflection on them that they feel empowered in a bizarre way yeah. by just saying mean things. Oh, for sure. I mean, I. I it, it, I definitely think it takes a certain type of person to like take the time to see something you don't like. Right, that's what I'm saying. And then just continue to watch it. Like and they have then an MO. Go yeah. and like go to the comments and then type and then think of a comment and then type it out and then press. Yeah. See, for when I don't like something, I just like kind of go to something else. Yeah, I scroll through. That's it what I'm like, saying. It's like because I don't weird. like everything. You know, there of are things I'm like, not. Oh, there, you know, but I I would I don't. I, I don't think I've ever, unless it like personally offended me right. or something like, or could be offensive to another community, ever commented saying like, "This sucks." You know, I can't yeah. imagine a world. But um, yeah, no, the internet definitely created um, this like weird little shield of a screen to mm-hmm. do whatever you want without consequence, right? Yeah, and I think that's why sometimes it's important for me to to be honest with, especially my followers, about how certain things make me feel. Whether or not that's just over dramatic, or people typically the comments are like, "Hey, just block it out. It's so unimportant," you know. Yeah, and it's easier said than done. It's so, it's yeah. so much easier said than done. I think like most most people that you know aren't so much in the creator space wouldn't even know how to handle one, you know, because I can't sometimes. So, yeah, um, it's really really challenging, and also yeah. You know, you're already established in your career. You know, you're a a woman, you know. Think about for young kids, like young kids who are not developed. Right. And their their whole lives are in this virtual space. Yeah. And I feel like I fear that they're not learning skills in real life. Yeah. You know, like the like for an example, let's say you're in the elevator. Yeah. And there's like other people in the elevator. Yeah. Like I still would like make eye contact with yeah. someone. I break maybe the smile. Silence. Like I always make a fart you know joke. I mean? <laughs> of course you do. I can't of help it. Do. I'm like, don't do it, Jax. Don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. And then it's like, <laughs> it's like, who farted? <laughs> You idiot. No, but that's amazing because <laughs> you're connecting with human beings in real life. So my point is, I fear that the younger generation might not make fart jokes in an elevator. Yeah, that's no, our biggest they, fear. That's yeah, that's <laughs> our biggest fear. But I'm saying like to make, to make connections, you know, to, like they're yeah. just glued to like they can't even be alone or have any downtime yeah. or quiet Co- time. COVID, or... I think, did had a, probably did a number on some of these kids, too, I feel like. Um, yeah. Especially, you know, your face is covered up. You're, you're at home. Oh, yeah. You're doing things virtually. It's definitely a leap now for some of these kids to go out and like relearn social cues and stuff like that. Right. But yeah, no, I I see it. I see it on both. I see both sides of it. You know, like I see also a really extroverted generation too. There's Mm -hmm. like a lot of people that are extroverted in that they see things on the internet, they get inspired and they go want to be a singer or want to be a writer or want to be an artist, you know, and that's cool too. So it's like downsides to all It's true. You're absolutely right. I think it's about moderation in anything. Yeah. It's not natural, that's for sure, like what we have in our hands yes, at it's our not. disposal. Like I think it's not natural humanly. Yeah. Um, we're not going to stop the technology from happening unless we all decide to go off the grid collectively. Right. But um, it's Like how weird. about for you personally because so much of your life now is on TikTok. Like how yeah. do you stay grounded and sane? I – Moved to the valley. <laughs> like, <laughs> I got a dog. <laughs> no, what kind of dog? Uh, oh, uh, well, we have a mini golden doodle and oh, a mini Aussie doodle, new puppy. Us the best. She is so exciting. A little bitch, and I love her. She's Aww. very. She's like me. She's Aww. not willing to take no for an answer. I love it. Perfect. Um, yeah. No. I, I have human thirty minutes in the morning. Human thirty minutes before I go to bed. Okay. And I have a very, very, very small circle of friends that I love and trust and that keep it That's real everything. with me and care more about me as a human being than me on a on social media. So, right. Um, it's pretty, and a fiance. Oh, I know. Congratulations to you guys. Thank you. Do you have any wedding plans or are you just enjoying this time? <laughs> I'm going to be honest. I feel like a little bit of a walking ad where I'm like, when we announced the engagement. Yeah. We had so many brands reaching out, offering all this free stuff oh for my our God. wedding. But I felt like we had, like, 
we should probably do the wedding. Otherwise, we're going to lose all our free stuff and we'll forget <laughs> about it. So I'm like, <laughs> shout out to David's Bridal Anthropology. Like, I'm like, <laughs> swipe up for <laughs> <laughs> what was it? Oh my God! D- uh, Gordon Ramsay gave us pots. I'm like, uh, just all oh these like God, all this amazing. swag. So I'm basically making a wedding based on swag. But I was like, uh, yeah, we're gonna do it this year. So it's actually weirdly, I said to him last night, the thing I'm least stressed about my imagine saying this as a girl the least stressful thing of my year right now is my wedding wow and um, it's bringing me it's another human thing that is like bringing me Aww. back to reality of like oh. A party with all the people I, I love, love and yes. that love me and Aww. my fiance, and we get to just lock it in together in front Aww. of all those people. I'm excited, and it's going to be emo. We're going to do like an early 2000s cringy emo. That's incredible. <laughs> Wait, tell me more about this. This is amazing. <laughs> I got to show you. It. Yeah, I show you my. Uh, I'm like, this is amazing. My photos are crazy. Yeah, this is. We did a. Uh, I had a photo shoot the other day, and I'm like bad at those. Honestly, I'm incredibly awkward in front of a camera. And, <laughs> but I asked the photographers, I was like, "Is there any way like you guys can do our engagement photos?" Because my mom is saying we need them. Yeah. And we get eyeliner, I flat ironed his hair. Thank God you're wearing a my chem shirt. I'm wearing the my chem yeah, shirt. We're doing drape. the like. What is this roar? Oh, roar. it's so good. The W, the R. A W R. Oh yeah, <laughs> it's so good. And will the music all be from that time as well? For the most part, I'm gonna throw a bone to some of our older relatives and give them yeah. what they want. Give them the don't stop believing. Right, of course you got to. This week you got to balance. Balance. <laughs> yeah. That's so exciting. Yeah, I'm excited. So when is it? October. Ex- amazing. My favorite month. Is it? Because of Halloween, or you just like? Yeah, both. Oh, yeah. Okay. All things fall. East Coast is yeah, like of course, East the, Coast best fall is the best magic. I miss it. That's what I miss the most Me about too. living in LA is fall in New York. Oh, it's the best, it's the right? Best. The, the just like that moment where you realize you can start wearing Uggs. Yeah, and, and like <laughs> cider and like mm-hmm. apple picking. I am the most basic white bitch when it comes to all things. You're like commercial, pumpkin everything. Fall. <laughs> Halloween stuff, the 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 freaking home goods, all of it. So fun. I am, what was your best Halloween costume? Nickelback. Oh my was, god. Okay, I that just wins. wore an open back shirt and taped nickels to my back. Genius. <laughs> it was the that easiest is, costume. That's fantastic. Yeah. Amazing. <laughs> what about you? I think my best costume was I was the girl from The Ring. I don't know if you remember that movie, the terrifying me, one with the fucked me. Yeah, up. it's so scary. <laughs> and I took a VHS tape and took out the tape and wrapped it around my neck. Oh my god! Like I was scary. Wait, I was you're very like straight scary. up like Lindsay Lohan. Yeah, I was scary. I'll, like... I'll find a picture and share it with you because I'm like most proud of how scary it was. Please, I need it. That, yeah, I love. I'm. Ugh. All the power to the people that go through like an uncomfortable night. Yeah. Of just like full fake I, that was me. I was really and, like all of it. Usually I'm either that or I'm like Shira, like I'm like an eighties like cartoon superhero or Look. Gem from Gem and the Holograms. Whoa. I like to do throwbacks. I gotta see some. Of yeah. These. I need the inspo for this. Oh wait, it's gonna be my wedding. Yeah. My- <laughs> that's true. Yeah. Just that's my costume. <laughs> <laughs> that's it. Just kidding. Going back to Cinderella Snap for a second. Mm-hmm. What about this? Your debut album's coming this year too. You have a huge year I hope, ahead. I hope. Right? Yes, right. It's happening. <laughs> debut album. That's an announcement yeah. if I've ever heard one. So I guess now we have to. <laughs> <laughs> I'm holding you to it. I look, I have lots of lots of music. I write songs just because I have just diarrhea of the mouth. Are you that I, prolific? Are you just constantly writing? I don't know if it's prolific. My, my ADD is that strong that I just, like, if I have an idea, I got to write it. So, wow. so much music, and I've narrowed it down to a body of work, and I'm, I'd love to put out an album um, and make this one of an, an, an era of many. So, I'm not, like, who knows? Next year I'll probably be in a totally different headspace. Yeah. Maybe I'll be on my, like, off-the-grid full beard thing. <laughs> so it's just like a full singer you. songwriter yeah. like <laughs> right it's your folk face yeah it's my folk face what is your songwriting process is it lyrics first yeah. or yeah typically i mean it doesn't have to be it just i think sometimes it depends on the room um i prefer being alone um in a lyric space unless of course i'm comfortable enough with somebody in the room another lyricist that at, on a friendship level where it's just like writing alone, you know, because yeah. I, I get so in my head and so I care too much about what people in a room think because I'm a world-class people pleaser that it's easier for me to 
write what I really want to write when I'm just kind of sitting there for sometimes I could sit in silence for two hours while like my producer that I love will sit there in silence for his two hours and then be like turn around and be like okay are we good and I just get on the mic and start working working things out but I find it easier to go into the studio with a word or a concept and work around that because a lot most of my inspiration starts like it could be right now you know yeah. I could just write a, oh she said a word where I'm gonna put it in my notes and I'll save it for a day where I'm writing um, but sometimes, especially when I'm writing for another artist and they're in the room, yeah. I like to like let them take the lead or they like to, however they like to write because it's their project. Start with, you know, a, the track or just a beat or some people like to just, you know, crank autotune. People always say autotune's like this autotune, but it's such a crazy instrument and tool in, a, in the studio because crazy melodies, when you lock into one key, crazy melodies can come out yeah. or something. So some people will just riff with high tune on and it'll lock you into, oh, that's a great, that's a great idea. It's almost like closing your eyes and playing piano and seeing what happens, right? So yeah. it's, it's cool. So it depends. I've, I've done it all the ways, but I prefer, I prefer concepts and starting there. And it's a, I've been told it's a very Nashville approach. Yeah, it is a very Nashville approach. Yeah. You've worked with so many people. You did A Little Bit of Love, right? With yeah. Weezer. I love that song. Thank Were you. Were you with Rivers in the room or how did that I come was about? not. Okay. But Rivers did totally do his own thing on it um was not even meant to i wrote it with a friend with that producer too that i was talking about and it was at a time mid quarantine where we've all we at the point where we've all adjusted to yes. our new lifestyles right but it still sucked and there was a lot of um a lot of things going on in the world as we remember and a lot of anger online a lot of people yeah. fighting on social media and we were like oh it would be really cool to write a pop song that's like hey you know just a friendly reminder amidst the chaos that uh just a little bit of love and being nice to somebody could go a really long way yeah even if even in a fight like when you're when you're fighting for somebody's rights or whatever it is on the like just the way you speak to someone yes can go a long way for the movement you're speaking about. And I think it came from a place of everybody kind of just snapping at each other in grocery stores or getting too close or whatever yeah. it was. We were all like in the same level of fear. Um, and it wasn't meant to be a Weezer song in the first place. And it morphed into its own thing once Rivers got a hold of it. So that's so cool. It was cool because I like, you know, that's a big deal. Yeah. I mean, how does that feel for you when a song, you know, that you wrote? Is, is everywhere on the radio and it's a Weezer song, you know? It is like one of the coolest feelings of all time. When I tell you, like, you feel like it's your baby and yeah. you're watching your baby shine. That's so like, cool. To yeah. be part of it and not and also not have the pressure of being the face of it, mm -hmm. you know, and just to know that people are connecting with something that kind of came from your brain and heart and they like it with someone else singing it and yeah. you don't have to kind of like do a tap dance to, and then they're like the song it. speaks for itself it's that's, really it's so cool it's so cool it's really cool we were talking this earlier but like i think people forget that communication is two ways yeah. it's not just you speaking it has to be received yeah by the person in right. order for the communication to happen you have to be an active listener and actually care about what's going on. So the way is, you're saying it needs to be in a way that the person is open to receiving it, yeah. you know? So it's like knowing your audience, but it's also being empathetic. Right. How will this person receive what I'm saying in the best possible way? Right. Otherwise, it what's the point? Right. right? It's like, is it, but is people it kind? Don't, don't think about that. Is it helpful? And is it necessary? You know, They're like right. those are, you have to consider all those things or, or, are you just trying to kind of hear you? Exactly. And I'm guilty of that all the time, you know, especially when I'm fighting with my fiance. He's, like, <laughs> he's loving this. He's like, yeah, you are. <laughs> Finally. <laughs> I love the, the, vid the video that you posted that really resonated with me the most was the Times Square one. One, because I'm a New Yorker. Um, <laughs> yeah. And I actually hosted Times Square New Year's Eve for many years. So I love Times Square. Me too. But it was obviously showing the juxtaposition of you as like, maybe you were like 14, yeah. just like trying to make it in the city yeah. and then cut to you on your father's shoulders <laughs> now like pointing to your massive billboard. <laughs> and so just cool. It was so cool. So surreal. Like were your parents just beaming? Like just yeah. tell me what that, that whole journey means to you. Well, first on that moment, I was – when they see me on a billboard, they're pretty – you know, they live across the country. They're pretty detached and, yeah. and far removed from the daily grind of it out here, right? They are – 
just so excited about everything when I get to see them. So I had to literally drag my mom out of Times Square because she was like, everybody, she was like mad that people weren't looking at the bill. That's my daughter. Everybody look like they want. I'm like, mom, it's okay. Like they'll see it. It's a billboard in Times Square. It's pretty much there. It's like bright. It's illuminated. It's like the most you could possibly get someone to see something, right? And no, they they are just so, so proud. They've gotten to see me in every in every high and every low of my work and my health mm-hmm. and my journey and my just my entire life. Uh, they So uh, but I'm just literally a product of the two of them. So Aww. it's like they get to watch something come to life that our family built together, you know? It's they beautiful. used to be my, like I have been, my dad would like lug amps around, just drench in sweat and open mics, like bar shows, high school performances, so cool. you know, like growing up just trying to get people to hear my songs he'd be basically when i'd panhandle in Times square or yeah. in washington square you know and we'd set up a guitar case and open it up and i'd sing we'd take that money and treat our parents to dinner oh because my god I they've love invested that. far more yeah. of their money into like helping us do music me and, and my guitarist at the time so we were like yeah we worked all day but just so you know you take the cash and we'll buy you dinner right that's the sweetest well they <laughs> It is far sweeter what they went through now as an adult, knowing how long what a they, dollar what they and how far and what they sacrificed. And we weren't, we didn't yeah. come from money. Like I, I didn't. We, my mom just retired as a middle school teacher in Brooklyn, and my dad was a firefighter, but he was a first responder during 9/11, and he was oh. injured on the job. So, but after it was yeah. a, I mean, it was a bit of a blessing for our relationship because I mean, a he lived, and b he turned into kind of dadager and was like, I'm going to take now this free time that I have. They made him retire. He loved his job. But the thing he loved even more was, you know, helping me do my dream. So he so it was a very cool thing. It's really, really awesome to let them take any victory lap they can because they deserve it more than I do. Oh, so, that's um, so beautiful. When you talked about like their love story, yeah. you know, I mean, and I saw the video footage of them. Like, I'm very lucky. My parents are in love and together for yeah. decades. I mean, that's the great. To 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 be, we're very lucky. Yes, that we were raised with, surrounded by that yes. love. Yes, uh, I I think it's rare. It is. Um. It's rare when it's goofy to, and honest, too. Yeah. Like, they've always been very physically affectionate. Oh, that's Which totally I used sweet. to think was so fucking gross. I was like, you guys are literally, like, you'd see them with tongue making oh, out. Oh, wow. Like, that's in next front level. Of, in front of my friends. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, my God, guys. I was like, I can't look at it. Oh, my God. And now I'm like, wow. Like, I'm like, this is so cool that they've been like, that goals. many years. Yeah. When I'm sitting here being like, I, I, I stink. I look like <laughs> shit. And I'm like, my fiance still wants to kiss me. Like, he knows everything about me. Yeah. And that's like, literally, that's it. That's the love story. So I, I wanted to like write it. I appreciate the love on that. So that that's probably my favorite um, song that I've ever written on a personal so level. Beautiful. Just, I've, I have never been that emotionally attached to a song in the way that I am with that one because. I'm like, I'm embarrassed it took me that long to write about their love story. Aww. And I was so excited to show them that one. Is that going to be at your wedding? Or are you going to do the father-daughter sure, dance? I'm sure my dad's not going to let it slide if it's yeah, not. Yeah, so you're going to have to. As much as, as cringe as it is to dance to your own song. I wanted to know, like, for you, like, do you remember music as long, like, since you were, like, a baby? Like, at what point did you just fall in love with music? Like, what did you grow up listening to? Everything. We had everything. Um... I love Billy Joel. Oh. I love the Beatles. I love Simon and Garfunkel. I went through most of my life in a huge like women women power rock and roll phase where I was like Joan Jett, Pat Benatar, yes. Haley Williams, like so Pink, great. you know, like yeah. um I grew up with it all. I always grew up with classic rock, musical theater. Definitely. Pop. Just early two thousands emo. I was a warp tour kid. I yeah. like, loved it all. Um I don't know if it was always necessarily a, about lo- my love for music as much as it was my love for entertaining people in a room because right. I just like I used to feed off of it when I was a kid and I just even I was you know when they you ever see that TikTok where it's like if you were one of those kids that performed for your family at Thanksgiving you have issues yeah. now and I'm like, hey. You're like, yeah. that's me. <laughs> I was definitely one of those assholes that was like everybody <laughs> 
<laughs> I'm just, putting on a show. Yeah. Just full main character. <laughs> yeah, that was me too, by the way. Great. Yeah. Okay, cool. We should, uh, by the way, everyone, Same. we actually have a performance we planned yeah. for everybody today. <laughs> actually. And scene, just like. <laughs> actually, I may or may not have a keyboard somewhere in the room. Great. Well, I'm there. <laughs> <laughs> it's under the table. Yeah. <laughs> what? Oh, my God. <laughs> actually, <laughs> shut the fuck up. <laughs> actually. No. <laughs> You did not just whip out a keyboard from Actually, nowhere. No big deal. How did Here you I even? Fi- how, did, how did? Where did it come from? How do you? Hi- how do you hide a piano? That's impressive. I'm not singing for you, but that's impressive. Like, okay. I'm dead. That's yeah, you, know, you do not have to. But if you, just but I would have taken one more request for you to be like, yes, you are, and I'm like, okay, <laughs> sure. Well, maybe we will. We can sit with it for a second. Dance, we can monkey, sit with dance. it for a second. Just letting you know it is right here and it does work and it's battery up. If, if my mom and dad were here, I'd already be singing at like this point. They're like, do it. I'm like, okay. That's amazing. Do they torture you and make you sing at like every family function, or do you love it, or do you suggest it? <laughs> I don't suggest it, okay. but they do, yeah. But I, I'm always yeah. happy to make them yeah. happy. It's like a, it's a daddy issue. I had to work out in therapy a little bit where I'm like, my dad's so proud of me, so I'm going to keep doing it. And uh. I'm like, all of a sudden, I'm burnt out because – and he's like, uh, I didn't need you to do that. Yeah. Like, that's like – and I'm like, oh, you're right. You like, that it. was self-inflicted. Yes. Yeah. I'm an adult now, and I can just not, right? I'm like, <laughs> yeah. What are, you, what are you proudest of so far? That's a great question. What am I proudest of so far? Um, I'm proudest that I get to wake up in a, in a property that I bought with That's my amazing. money making music and content and work. Uh, I've, it was like a manifested goal as I was buying scratchers with $30 in my bank account. Like literally we'd have scratchers and we'd just sit there for an hour before talking about what it would be like to be not in the world's shittiest apartment in LA yeah. and to have a house and a property. I'm like, one day, like, I didn't think it would be this soon, but that is, there's no feeling like coming home from like a long travel trip and working really hard and kind of burning out emotionally. And then you pull up and I see the house. That's it's nothing incredible. special. It was like the ugliest house in the nicest block really. And we fixed it up ourselves. Um, which was grueling, and I'm also proud of the fact that we stayed together during that. <laughs> That's impressive. Uh, yeah. We saw sides of each other we should probably shouldn't have seen so so soon in the relationship. <laughs> it's at least a you may as well show your true colors now. You may as well. <laughs> that right? was for after marriage for sure. Um, but, yeah, no, I, I am proud of being able to have – a little bit of financial comfort after a lifetime of work. Yes. And, um, but, yeah, I'm also proud of the fact that I – kept family and friend relationships around me while we did it. Um, Yeah, I I take a lot of pride in in, in how far we've come from even today to tomorrow. So that's really awesome. (laughs) Also, it's crazy to hear about your story as a cancer survivor, Mm. that you had a scary diagnosis. Yeah, it was definitely scary at the time, but honestly, the best cancer that I could have it was a great cancer I know it's like it feels like an oxymoron but I it's thyroid cancer so it's highly treatable right um, it did come back I did have a reoccurrence which was scarier than the first time because when it's when it reoccurs you start to really trip out right yeah and I, and I was young I was 19 at my diagnosis and went through up until I was about 22 in those two three years um, with full readjustment to my body and my hormones and I take a synthetic thyroid every morning uh, 4 30 and routines you know and regulating my medication the radiation the long-term wow. effects of all of it the surgeries how close it is to my vocal cords yes. it definitely shifted Terrifying. my voice a little bit um and but yeah no it was the first time in my life where God was like hey that's your body. You mm-hmm. gotta probably be nice to it because right. it's the only one you're gonna get. And um, I'm like, oh yeah, that's true. My temple. I yeah. have to start treating it like an adult and care a little bit more about it and hydrate a little more and mm-hmm. be a little healthier about this. Um, but yeah, it was scary. It was a scary time. You get, I think you get a little more freaked out when something traumatic happens to you. Yes. I think the first thing that you freak out about is like how it's affecting the people you love around you and kind of keeping everybody else just, no, no, it's okay, it's okay, okay. By the time it hit me, 
that it was happening to me, right. it was like right before I'm going down for the surgery. Like wow. all leading up to it was like my dad's crying and I don't like to see my dad cry. Yeah. Right? That's a weird thing to see your that dad cry. That is a cry. weird thing. Um, but yeah, it was, it turned into a spiritual thing. I think for my family, it was a lot of healing. We made a lot of cancer jokes to get me through mm -hmm. it. Like my brother likes to make like jokes about trauma. And to, that's how our family operates. So there's not, obviously nothing funny about cancer, but he did like when I came out of the first surgery, they like wheeled me out. I'm all drugged up with the, the neck brace. And, the, and my brother goes, Jax, I tried to warn you that the music business was cutthroat. Oh, and I was like, God, he was waiting. Good one, idiot. He was how waiting long, for how that long exact have you been practicing yeah. that line for when they wheeled me out in a neck brace? Oh, my God. You know, like, I think we deal with a lot of things with humor. So I think, yeah, it was tough. But it, I think more good came out of it than anything. So Another example of, like, the love and support of your family. Yeah, you know, not everybody has it. Right. I was really lucky. Wow. I was really, really lucky. I had it from everybody around me. Oh. I had old friends reaching out, a bunch of things. I was like, it's okay, it's okay. I'm not freaking out oh, yet. Thank God you're okay. <laughs> I mean, that's, that's, that's scary. Yeah, it was scary. I, um, the, I think the biggest trauma that came from it was with, like, the, like, just healthcare in yeah. general. And, like, um, when I, I – all, all power and respect to doctors and they're, they're the unspoken heroes, but I did go through – a, an extreme amount of people telling me I was fine and that it was a sinus infection, you know? That's why You kind of had to beg both times for a diagnosis, which is crazy. Why? Because you were so young, they just yeah, didn't assume it was, that. It, was, yeah. it would have been weird for it to be positive. Not that it's, like, totally uncommon, but it's, like, you're young, you're healthy, right. you're you're just probably tired, you're singing a lot, you're, going, you're doing a ton of shows, it's probably just your immune system's tr trying to catch up and you know, you have swollen lymph nodes. Right. So I found it because I felt a lump, which is also rare, you know? Yeah. So I felt it and I was like, what is this? Is it worth checking out? And my mom was the one who had insisted on being like, okay, it might be a sinus infection. I'm sure it is, but is there any shot you can just write up a script for yeah. an ultrasound so we could check it out? And they, they were like, fine, you know? Thank God and you then, did. And then, of course, it was like 18 growths, 12 positive you know, oh my God. and even the second time, a reoccurrence is so unlikely that um, it was like I had to be like, no, no, I, I still feel yeah. something. And they're like, all right, fine. You know, crazy. The lesson is you need to take care of you. True. You, know, you really need to stay on true. top of but it. But don't be a hypochondriac. Cause, that's true. And that's, that's me extreme. preaching when I'm totally a hypochondriac. So <laughs> I'm, I, I'm freaking out about everything all the time now. So what do you hope for? Like, What is your what are your all-time goals and aspirations? I have some things on the, the charity side I've always really wanted to do once I was in a place with my own money that I was comfortable enough starting one. Me and my mom are actually starting one together now. So that's, that's been a major goal of my life. One, I wanted to start um, a school for uh, kids with autism who find like a crazy outlet in music. Oh, that's and, wonderful. I want to just you know, take their energy out on music that are being stifled in like the regular school yes. system, right? And um, sometimes more than we even realize, some of the most brilliant art like can come out of giving kids opportunities to just do their thing with no structure and no limits, right? So I wanted to like create an environment eventually for kids to do their thing. But um, right now we started a charity that's called uh, the Kid I Babysit Project. Which is, you know, my mom was an, um, she was like an inner city school teacher. So she had experienced, you know, some pretty, pretty rough situations with right. kids who, you know, were sharing one bedroom with like 12 cousins, you yeah. know, and, and their parents were working through the day, through the night, just to be able to keep the to electricity survive. on and food on the table. Mm -hmm. So it like left the kids to have to even work or watch, be young and watching someone younger, you know, there's, it's not great. So I, I figured if I was gonna team up with my mom on this, now that she's retired, it'd be cool to like create a foundation where we provide um, sitters for those families. Oh, that that's need it. So amazing, uh, based Jax. on just the babysitter stuff, I'm having so much fun with that's that part. That's awesome. Thanks. I, I love, Look at you. I love that. So, you are an inspiration. Oh, man. I don't know about that. That's what you go, are. You are. You're very fun, gracious and humble, but you are. You, you really too, are. What you're dude. doing is, first of all, you're an incredible musician, but Thank you're you. using music. You're Thanks. using music as a platform to do service. 
Well, and there's really nothing better. I will say, like, there's a part of that on a hormonal front where I'm approaching like baby fe- baby fever mm-hmm. territory. So I'm feeling a little more maternal yes. than I ever was. So I'm feeling like that's why I, I feel that. God will never give you anything you're not ready for. That's what they always say. Yeah. Right? So and and I always just be like, screw that. Like, there's I'm ready. I'm yeah. Ready. Give me like I want to be a pop star, right? And then <laughs> you do that your whole life, and it's so superficial what you're saying. And then finally, you hit this rock bottom with money, with music, with your self confidence, with all the things you hit when you come out to Hollywood, and you're in the sea full of people far more talented than you, and you start to hit approach that territory of like, should I quit? What's my plan B? I should probably not have just put all my eggs in one basket feeling. Yeah. And then when it's given to you after that and you have some success in that moment, you're like, oh, my God, I have to do something like real with it. Like I can't just waste it on just, you know, self-importance in it because what's the point? Like it's so I think it came at a time in my life where it felt like more of a responsibility you know, and I'm so excited to be able to do stuff with a platform because I don't know. It could be anything. Maybe tomorrow I change my mind and I'm like, I want to make jewelry or something. But I just it'll be it's it's given me a lot of fun ways to, you know, try to get kids younger than me through what I had gone through at their age. So it's it's just fun. I'm oh, no therapist, but I'm so like definitely good. could write a good pun. All right, we're going to do deep cuts. It's just like quick Q&A. Okay. okay. Name a song, album, or artist that changed your life. <sighs> An album that changed my life was The Stranger. I'm a really big Billy Joel fan. Yes. I have, like, tattoos on my body of Billy Joel lyrics. And, uh, yeah, he changed my life. I love that. It makes perfect sense because New York, songwriter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Love Long it. Island. First concert? Uh, Britney Spears. Really? And then Hilary Duff. Oh, great ones. Great <laughs> yeah, ones. Yeah. A song you wish you wrote. Almost all of them, by the <laughs> way. Uh, I love Seven Years, Lucas Graham. And then I love um, Lost Boy. Oh, yeah. Great picks. Lost Boy, I wish I wrote. Every time I heard that song, I was like, oh. Oh, also um, Royals. Oh, Lord, yes. Lord. And Lord. Issues, Julia Michaels. Like, those are just some bangers, man. They are. I was like, oh, Why? Why couldn't I have rose this? <laughs> I think you're doing pretty well on your own. Uh, um, no, I'm not as good as that. <laughs> do you have a favorite movie? Yeah. Uh, I don't know if anyone would get this, but it's called Primal Fear. Uh, that's my favorite movie. You're lying. No, I swear you're to God. You're lying. With Ed Norton? With Ed Norton. <laughs> that's a good, wait, what? No one's what? ever said that to it's me. It's a psychological thriller. Ed Norton's It's a court best movie. Work and everybody thinks thing. it's a horror. When you say it's... Primal Fear, they're like, no, I don't watch horror movies. I'm Wait, like, no, this it's a is court drama. Unbelievable. And that I've ending, never met anyone. No the one. Ending. Where he goes, Yes. I don't, that first clap, you're like, Whoa. I don't want to give it away don't because if you haven't watched it, you should watch this movie. But I've never met anyone never else who loves it. In my life. I love I Ed Norton. Anyone. It's I think my second would be like Breakfast Club. That's a great one. Which is but that's yeah, a great God, one. I can't believe you even know what I just said. Because I feel like Please. people are always like, What? That's so weird. I like those kind of I like psychological thrillers. Me too. Like, Me too. And then like I, I yeah, I love sci fi. I like um the Time Traveler's Wife was a really good one for me. I love all that. It, like, I like you that. mixed, like, you know, science fiction-y type of stuff with romance. I like. Yeah. So. I love Rachel McAdams. She's great. She's, yes, my lady crush. I'm sorry. We're, like, forever connected with Oh, the my God. Theory. I can't get over that. If you weren't a musician, what would you be? Private Eye. Really? Yeah. Phenomenal. I love like, no I, hesitation. No, no. I'm so good at it. I, like, I'm, I'm such a stalker. <laughs> That's great. What a great skill set. I don't know if I'm even allowed to say this, but there was a point where my, my little brother was interning at the DEA, um, just like for a summer, just interning there. And I was like, yo, can you get me into the system? And, like, and he was like, no, like I'm an intern at the yeah. DEA. Like I'm not going to. I don't yeah. have any real like power here. No. And I was like, come on, let me do some background checks on people. Like I like, I love it. Oh I, my God. I can find anything. I used it. I used it once. Oh, like where my my skills. I used it once to call out a guy who stole money from me. Oh who like? God. There was this dude. It was my. It was karma. But like yeah. we were going somewhere from JFK that was like two hours away to Connecticut, and we've been on this promo tour for so long, and we really just wanted a bigger car 
to sleep in and like kick back. Right. But we couldn't afford it. So we like, this was not too long ago either. And we had just our lift was on the way. He's pulling up. We see it coming. And, you know, you shouldn't cancel on a lift like the last second. But it was one of those things where the guy outside was like, no, no, come to my car. Like he's right there. And I'm like, well, we do have a lift. And he was like, well, this is a black car. And I was like, I, we can't afford it. He's like, how much are you paying for your lift? And I'm like, oh. like well, this month. And he was like, I'll match it. I'll do it $10 less. And we're like, we look at the lift. We look at him. Cancel on this poor driver. Right. But I got so excited just to be in this car. And we talked to this dude for like two and a half hours about his life and his kid and his everything and entrepreneurship and all these things. He wants to start his own car company and whatever it is. Go figure. He like I, we give him our card and he charges me like seven hundred dollars. Oh, and I like okay. look at thank God I looked at my account that night and I was like, what? Couldn't find him anywhere. He's he specifically makes the charge. He's like he does this a lot, obviously, because he made the charge um, for GoDaddy. Like this is your GoDaddy annual payment, is what it said. And I was like, what? And then I He's found like a it. professional con man. It's exactly. Scary. And I found yeah. it through like the metadata of the bank statement, right? Of like, did, because Amex is so good, they'll just like refund you for it. But yeah. It's like out of principle. I wanted to like yeah, address like this. I was codes. like, we talked about your kid. I offered like to make your kid a video. Your kid was a big JoJo Siwa fan. I was like, <laughs> I was like, I'm ready to get JoJo Siwa yeah, to send like in a video. Making I was connections like, for him. Yeah. Ready to like help him in his life with the, the I, whatever oh, I no. could offer, right? And then he just goes and robs me, right? And it's like, I, I found everything and I like found his his girlfriend I found the YouTube channel and I just ended up commenting on one of his posts being like hey there like I just I saw that you may have accidentally charged like $700 to my account um I just wanted to let you know like still rooting for your entrepreneurship and your your car company but just like my dad always taught me probably like you have a daughter too you know what it's like you probably like (gasps) shouldn't you don't really need to steal from young women I think you could do this on your own and that's like for a guy to hear that it's pretty degrading and I like no and he kept deleting the comment and blocking me and stuff and I I was kind of ruthless but I I like the way that you handled it first of all you killed with kindness just full Karen dim like I was like no that was good the way you handled it it's just so weird like yeah, stealing that's... from like credit cards and identity theft. Yeah, it's always been a weird thing. But yeah, anyway, private eye was the short answer to that. I love it. I, I love it. I love the challenge of finding something on the internet. It's I'm such a creep. Ooh, I'm maybe you should pursue creep. this. <laughs> it's, it's, I'd have it's a, it's a so plan much B. fun with it. Like on a, just an online creep like, oh that I God. am. I'm, I'm not like, sure if this is good or like scary. Yeah. Yeah, it's scary. I, it's like funny. Tell your aunt congratulations, by the way, on her. I'm just kidding. Like, I can imagine. <laughs> I, like, stalked you and your family before I got here on Facebook. Maybe. What is something fans would be surprised to learn about you? This is the moment I realize I'm way too transparent online and I should say way too much. (laughs) Just, like, keep some stuff to yourself. Um, Maybe we should ask your fiancé. Yeah, come on in. (laughs) Um, My ear thing. thing. I have two ear things, actually. You have two ear things. Jax cleans her ears with (laughs) Q-tips. Three times a day. <laughs> oh my god! Is that OCD? I can't like tell. <laughs> and I am also wildly insecure about my earlobes. <laughs> it's like a thing too. Oh my god. Look at these! Look at these! <laughs> oh, oh. beautiful <laughs> earlobes! Don't look I like at them. to play with them. No, I know he <laughs> likes to mess with me because he knows that I'm freaking insecure about it. Okay, what do you hope to achieve next? I am really excited. I hope to get through a healthy, a physically and emotionally healthy tour. I have a summer tour coming up, and I'm already kind of burnt out by mid-March, and um, it's going to take some work to get back into that headspace where I'm, you know, meditating yeah. and whatever. So I want to get through a tour without burning my voice out because I yeah. got to that point last year, steroids and whatnot. It's like stupid. Mm-hmm. I want to do a tour, and I want to really feel good physically and mentally and just enjoy the fruits of people paying for a ticket to come out and Aww. sing with you. And I'm, I'm so excited. So tour. Aww. Tour is the next step. Tour. Yeah. Jax, I'm cheering you on. I well, think you are thanks. so awesome. You, you and your earlobes. Look at this <laughs> empire you've built. This yeah. is just freaking awesome. I'm, I'm so proud of you. And this is oh. just like, thanks for, for Thank being a trailblazer you. In, in L.A. This, this, oh. town is, this town is brutal. So you did it. Thank you. Did we just become best friends? I still cannot believe that we both love the same movie. And how great is it that I had that keyboard under the table ready to go? I do regret now, though, not having her play something. But next time.
Okay, it is now time for my sound advice. New music you need to know featured on the Allison Hagendorf Show playlist, and you can find the link to that in the show notes. First up on my sound advice is the band Sunrose. This band has the fire and the energy I've been waiting for. It's a four-piece from LA, and their debut album, Self Immolation, is out today. Check out Sunrose and their song, Ain't No Pope. Next on my sound advice this week is a genre-defying artist that I'm loving called Gigi McGree. She's an Australian electronic DJ, producer, singer, who has been doing more in the rock space. And I am all about her latest song, which she says is about being the most attracted to someone when they don't want you and understands how toxic that can be. Check out Gigi McGree and her song, Turn Me On. Also on my sound advice is a collaboration between the guys in Beauty School Dropout and Jaden, who are currently on tour together. Beauty School Dropout described their sound as renegade pop, and this new song with Jaden is straight up infectious. Check it out. It's called Freak. Next on my sound advice is the band Romes, who are brothers based in Toronto. This song is definitely their hardest to date as an, and is an homage to the 90s grunge and alt rock they grew up on. And you know this is making me so, so happy. Check out the latest from Romes. It's called Choker. Also on my sound advice this week is a song from L.A. band Iron Tom. I've been supporting this band for a while. Their influences range from Led Zeppelin to Arctic Monkeys, but they definitely have a sound all their own. They have a new album coming, which they self-produced, and is the first single off of it, which is out today. Check out Iron Tom's latest. It's called Con Artist. That's my sound advice this week. You can hear all of these plus more on the Allison Hagendorf Show playlist. The link to that is in the show notes and at allisonhagendorf.com. As always, thank you so much for being part of the Allison Hagendorf Show. New episodes drop every Friday, so make sure you follow and subscribe so you don't miss a thing. You can find the show wherever you listen to podcasts, and you can also watch the show on Instagram and YouTube. I would love to hear from you, so please like, comment, rate, review, whatever you're feeling, and reach out to me on socials at Allie Hagendorf. I would love to connect with you. Let me know who I should interview next and what new music I should feature on my sound advice. Thanks again. I'll see you next week. And remember, you're a rock star. Hold up. 